This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through this 2018 KZ Spree model number S251RK okay so this is not a floor plan video or a, a sales video I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work okay so obviously you have power stabilizer jacks you have one switch controls two rear jacks you have another switch up front that controls the two front jacks never lift the trailer with the jacks you're just taking the wiggle out of it okay just stabilizing it uh, you have a power awning with LED strip you have uh, outside speakers and then you have a TV signal out plus power here if you wanted to set a TV out here alright that's the other the front uh, stabilizer jack switch this is this is just in case you wanted to purchase a solar panel to charge the battery this particular one's made by Furion so you would have to buy their solar panel because it's got a unique plug but that's all this is in case you wanted to get a, a panel to charge your battery okay this is your um, hitch it's a husky center line um, weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control we'll show you how this operates when you pick up um, back there is your is a uh, we might be able to see it better from the other side, but that's a crank. Um, uh, let me let me just step back for a second here and check something out so I can give you the right information here. Okay, so this crank that I was just telling you about, we'll look from the other side. You can see it has a, a cylinder with a um, slot cut in it. Well. With, uh, with your stabilizers, your power stabilizers, you can actually crank them manually. You can see it's got a cylinder with a pin through it. Hopefully you can see that. So you can always, if they happen to fail uh, for any reason, you can always come over here to the off-door side, put the crank on here, and crank them up and down manually. Okay. All right. Obviously, this is your 30-amp, your 30-foot 30 30 power cord. This is your dump hose and a, that is a reducer to reduce down to 15 slash 20 uh, amp plug. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so this right here is the kill switch for your battery. So if you want to disconnect your battery, you can do it right here. Okay. The only time you do that is if you're putting it into storage for a long period of time. If you're pulling it, you want it on so your alternator on your tow vehicle will charge the trailer. And then when you're plugged in, you want it on because your uh, power converter will charge the battery. So the only time you're going to shut it off is you're going into storage for a long period of time or storage period. Okay, so this is a power tongue jack. Also, this can be operated manually. You see in there, you could put a socket on there and uh, crank this manually if you need to. All I gotta do is get it back on now. There we go. Now, you have two uh, LP tanks. With an automatic changeover regulator, you have uh, a deep cycle marine battery. And this is a toy lock here, of course. Just a cable to lock your bicycles or dirt bikes or whatever you've got that needs locking. Okay, so the most common way to get water to this trailer here is, is through the city water hookup. So you would just hook the hose on there, turn it on, and everything is ready to go. All your, all your fixtures will, will work. Um, now, if you happen to be going to a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, you can take this cap off and pre-fill your fresh water tank. Uh, there's an onboard pump, so once you fill it, you get to the campground that does not have plumbing. You can turn it on, and, and all the appliances, or all the the the, uh, the faucets, and the shower, and the toilet, and everything will work just like you have city water. But you'll be pumping it out of the tank. Okay. All right. So these are your dump valves here. Obviously, the larger one is the black, which is toilet water and waste. The smaller one is the gray, which is sink and shower water. So you're going to pull the black one first and dump it first because it's the dirtiest of the water, the dirtiest of the tanks, and then you'll pull the the um, gray one next and that'll kind of help wash out the uh, the uh, uh, hose and stuff now let me look around a little bit here let me walk to the back 
quickly. Okay, so this has a black tank flush on it, right? So after you dump the black tank and the gray tank, you leave the black tank valve open and you can hook the hose from the dump station right down here, turn it on and you, it'll spray the inside of your black tank out. It'll clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. That way it, um, it'll uh, keep the sensors clean so they give you good accurate reading and it just cleans it out in general. Okay. Okay. And here's another another tank back here. Okay. Another valve and tank. This is just an outside shower. This is where your your 30 amp shore core goes. This is your um, water heater. Now you see the switch right here. There's an on and off. Remember that, that this switch controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here, if you can see it. Um, so before you, you can use the electric heating element, you have to turn that to the on position. Never, never turn it on without water in the tank because you can burn it, the, the uh, element out really quickly. So always make sure there's water in the tank. Also, this is where you drain it, your water tank. That's an inch and a sixteenth, six point socket will go on there and you can, you can take it out to drain it. Um, also drain it for the winter time so it doesn't freeze. Also there's an anode rod attached to this plug here which is about six inches long or so. Um, it's just like a sacrificial rod called an anode rod. Okay, let me see here. Okay, so let's move around a little more. This has a backup camera. I see the camera mounted up there, okay. Um, also this vent right here, this is the vent for your range hood. So you can see there's like um, uh, a latch on each side here. If you're going to vent to the outside using your range hood uh, fan, you can push up on these two tabs and the baffle will then flap freely so it vents to the outside. But when you're not doing that, if you're, let's say you're just um, um, in storage or, or traveling, you'll keep this shut so the baffle doesn't you know, get damaged whipping around in the wind. But when you're venting, you always want it to be open. Okay. This is just the service panel for your refrigerator. And then you have a rack that drops down to put stuff on. Okay. All right, so let's go inside. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so these are uh, some of your controls here. Your slide room is right here. Your power awning is here. You can see it goes like so. Never leave it out unattended. If you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in so it doesn't get damaged by the weather. You have lights here. Okay. Um, let's see. And the other one is for your slide room. Let me look around a bit. I didn't go through the whole trailer before I started doing this video, which I should have done. Okay. So more control panel uh, items over here. This is, this is to check your battery, which is charged. Fresh water tank empty a black and the two gray tanks. Remember I told you there's two gray tanks. Gray tank number one is is for the sink and this shower and the sink right here in the bathroom. Uh, number two is the is a galley tank which is gray tank number two and that's for the kitchen sink. Remember I told, showed you there was a, a single valve towards the rear of the trailer that would be for your your galley uh, tank. Okay. The toilet if you don't know RVs, it has a flush pill right here, right? You can't use it empty. By empty, we're talking about the black tank, which is directly below, right? So um, after you hook up your power and your water, you're going to dump one dose of chemical right in here. Then you'll step on the pedal. Water comes swirling out, okay, and then wash everything into the, into the tank below. You'll stand on the pedal long enough to put about a gallon or so of water in there. Some people use more. It's up to you. The main thing is you have to have chemical and water in the black tank before you start using it. Otherwise, otherwise the smell will be terrible and um, you can also get clogged up. So make sure you do that. Okay, um, I told you it has a water pump which is here. Um, water heater. Let me get closer here. On gas right here. And this one's for electric. Remember I told you there was a second switch outside in the lower left hand corner for the electric too. So make sure you have both of them on. Okay. This is a GFCI here. All the plugs are wired through a GFCI, even the one on the outside, the plug on the outside. So make sure that uh, if it 
if you're using an appliance outside the pops, you're going to reset it in here. Okay. All right. So let me come back into here. Look around just a little bit. See what I else I need to tell you about. All I do is have to find it. This right here is your LP detector. It should always be green. If it goes off, obviously you take everybody outside. Um, this one might do carbon monoxide too. Let me look real close and see if it, I can read it. Yeah, this does carbon monoxide and LP gas. So if it detects either of those, it will go off. So just make sure you take everybody outside. Leave the door open, shut the gas off, and figure out what's going on. Okay, so this is what I was looking for here. This is your power converter right here. So when you're plugged in to store power, um, 110 AC comes into here. You have regular household circuit breakers like you see at home right here, and they're all labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. You have 12 volt fuses here, and they're labeled. Also, keep in mind that um, this is a battery tender, so as long as you're plugged in, it's going to sense how much energy your battery needs and to send it whatever it needs to keep it charged. If, it, if it's charged, charged up, it'll just trickle a couple amps. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs. So keep that in mind. As long as you're plugged in, this charges your battery too. And um, also, if any of the fuses blow, they'll actually light up and you can see them glowing through this tinted plastic here. Okay, so that's the power converter. Okay, let me move back to the front here. As I'm going by, this is your thermostat. It's very simple. Always try to keep the fan on auto. One click to the right is heat. A click to the passed off to the left is the fan, which is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. It just circulates air. Then if you click, click it one more time to cool, that's your um, full air conditioning. Okay. Like I said, always try to run the fan on auto. Auto high is good. Okay, this is the range that I told you about. Remember I told you you have to open that baffle outside so it'll vent to the outside. It has a light and a fan. This um, microwave works like any other microwave. Nothing unique about it. The refrigerator is um, very simple. You have off, which is on off, and you have auto. Auto is where you're going to use it most of the time. So when it auto means it always seeks out 110 AC. Um, right now we're not plugged in, so it just recognized that. So it switched to gas. So it'll look for AC power, and if it finds it, it'll use it. And if not, it'll automatically switch over to gas. But more importantly, uh, more, a more practical thing is, let's say you're, uh, you're gone for the day. You leave early in the morning. You're gone for the day out exploring. It's a hot day, and soon after you leave, the campground power goes out. Well, it'll sense that, and it'll automatically switch over to gas for you, so it don't spoil the food, or your food. So that's, a, that's, a, that's where you, why you generally want to have it on auto. Now, you can go all the way to gas if you want. Um, when you're pulling it down the road, you can run it on gas, no problem. Um, okay, and you're all, basically, you're always going to have it up as high as it goes when it comes to your temperature. Once it gets colder outside, sometimes you'll, uh, you, can, you can dial it down a bit, but generally, you're going to have it all the way up. Okay, so you got a freezer and a uh, refrigerator. So this is gas absorbs refrigerator. It works on 110 AC or LP gas. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So let me see what we have here. This sparks to light. This is your sparker right here. You turn it clockwise. I don't know if he's got the gas on right now. I'll just see. Doesn't look like he does. Oh yeah, he does. So you can see it just lit right there. Um, by turning this clockwise. Now the, the oven, which has never ever been used, this you have to light with a grill lighter. So you'd have to have a long neck lighter. All the way back here is a pilot light, right? So all you would do is, is go to pilot and then depress the oven knob, keeping it depressed during the whole lighting process. Then you would use your grill lighter to light the pilot light back there. After it lights, you still hold this in for another 10 seconds or so to heat it up. Then you go to whatever temperature you want to. When you shut it off, obviously the flame goes out but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay, we're getting close here. All right, let me look around a bit. Okay. Okay. This is uh, I think we've covered just about all of it here. Always run the uh, your your uh, ceiling vent with the shower because you want to pull the humidity out so you don't. Uh, 
you know, create a climate where mold or mildew could grow. So make sure you vent it out. Okay, so you have another vent up here, of course. This is a TV hookup in the bedroom here. There's also a backing plate here for a bracket. Um, you can pull up your, your, your bed and there's some storage underneath there for, for stuff. Okay, you can drop your uh, table down onto these cleats here and use the back cushions to fill the space and turn that into a bed. Um, this is a, let me see what it is, it's a hide a bed so you take the back cushions off and you can fold it out into a into a bed so you got another place for people to, to sleep. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Obviously your your TV works like any other TV. Um, I don't know if you can see it where, but where the coax cable goes into that second panel up there it's actually green there's a green LED on it you always want that to be on when you're using the antenna otherwise you won't get a good picture there's a little button next to it turn it on and off so make sure it's on or you won't get a good picture this is a nice bracket it locks into place which is good because you want to be able to um, uh, you know you don't want it, the TV to swing around when you're driving down the road obviously and then of course last but not least your sound here um, you play CDs and DVDs here it has Bluetooth. Let me make sure because I don't this year should have Bluetooth. All I'm doing is looking for the symbol. Okay. Well heck. Okay. Yes, right there. It lit up there. So that's your Bluetooth signal there, or symbol there, so it has Bluetooth so you can hook up wirelessly with your phone or tablet. It has two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. You can stream off this USB right here, take all your albums, put them on one stick and take them with you. And it has AM, FM radio also, plus the discs, okay? So it does quite a bit when it comes to camping, all right? Okay. So I think that's it. So... I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit and please remember that the manufacturers all state that you should inspect your roof every 90 days. By inspecting it you uh, go up there or have somebody else go up there be very careful. You can walk on the roof but be very careful. Um, you look at all the sealant and make sure there's no cracking or separation, no, no way for water to leak into the trailer. This trailer is, is, is dry. As I walk around, I can, can tell. You also can tell by the smell of it. It doesn't smell moldy or musty. That means it was taken care of, and it's, it's, um, it's nice and dry, which is what you want, of course. So make sure you go up and inspect your roof and make sure that it stays that way. Um, make sure that low branches didn't damage your roofing material or any of your vent covers, anything like that. And like I said, you look at all the sealant. Some year, sometime when you go up there, you're going to see something that needs to be touched up. So you do that immediately. Don't buy stuff at a hardware store. Always go to the RV place and get, for the roof, you're going to get something called Dicor, which is a lap sealant. comes in a caulk tube for about 10 bucks or so. You just clean off the area that needs to be touched up, and you go right over the top of it. You don't have to scrape anything off. But make sure you take care of that. It's very important. With people who own trailers, don't inspect it enough, so it's an important thing to do. Also, before it freezes, you have to winterize it, so you have to learn about that if you don't already know. You have to bypass the water heater and go through the proper procedure so uh, nothing freezes up and gets damaged, okay? Thank you very much.